You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Tell yourself, I know who I am. And who you are, listen, listen, who you are is not this one I'm saying now. The who you are is inside you. You just need to look very carefully into the mirror that shows you the real you. The mirror of a believer is the word of God. I have a, an image. I'm going to send it. Let, let, me, let me send it to... I'm going to send it now to your whatever, to your laptop or your system, whatever you can get it, or your WhatsApp. I will send it to you now. Project it for them, you know, so they can see what image. You can just download it and then project it when you can, you know. I need them to see. I need them to see. Nothing is stopping you. Everything stopping you is inside you. Correct your pictures. Correct how you see yourself. Correct it. Correct it. Correct it. You won't travel far if you don't see yourself right. I've seen beautiful girls settling for less. I've seen handsome boys settling for less and then I wonder why. With all this is fineness. With all this is beauty. The problem is not the outside. It's the problem inside. What makes people act the way they act? It's not outside, sir. You can wear a suit and be a pig inside. I hope you know that. You can wear whatever you want to wear and impress people. But inside you is incomplete. Get that wound healed. No matter what it is. Maybe it's your background. That's why you need to stay on the wall. The wall is your mirror. When you stay on it, it begins to show you who you really are. Then the one that you're currently manifesting begins to give way for the one you should be manifesting. Which is inside you. If you're here, say, I'm here, sir. I want you to shout it like you know. Say, I'm here, sir. I'm here, sir. Mm. I've sent it to you, so get it and then somewhere along the line you can just um, project it. Project it. I'm from this part of the world and I live in this part of the world, at least for now. And that's my biggest prayer that God will deliver a lot of you from this side of the world out of mediocrity out of mental slavery out of wrong image out of seeing yourself the poor way you know why for instance people judge people people accuse people people criticize people people envy people people condemn people people jealous people something nice happening for somebody and then you are angry about the person angry this is what self-image is this is a cat but looking into the mirror, what he's saying is a lion. That's what we're talking about. That's what Christianity is. That's why I talk the way I talk. That's why I carry myself the way I carry myself. That's why I cannot wear nonsense and be walking around town. You know, that's why I can't dress any house. Sir. That's why I cannot mingle with anybody, just anybody. Existing, this is a cat, but he's looking into the mirror. What he's seen himself as is a lion. See yourself like that. Can you start seeing yourself as a president of a nation? Can you start seeing yourself as a queen? Can you start seeing yourself as a princess, as a king, as a prince? Can you start seeing yourself as maybe some of you should go and change your name if your name is following you? You see my own name. I, I exhibit it. There's power in name. That's why I even named my, ch- my child what I named her, if you know her name. Because there's power in name. Don't just call anybody anything. Azoka. Iroka. What's all that? You don't just call anybody anything. Ogbete. Hello. Eh. People with low self-esteem meets confidence and call it pride. There's a difference between confidence and pride. Okay. Let's leave it there. Take it away for now and then take it away. How to escape poverty. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 14. 
I will rush because Ooh, glory to God. Ecclesiastics, okay. Chapter 9, verse 14. There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it, besieged it, and built great snares around it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city, yet no one remembered that same poor man. Let me read again. No? Okay. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. That's verse 15. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city, yet no one remembered that same poor man. Okay, show verse 16. Then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his wars are not heard. By the time I'm done, some of you will even be crying this evening. <laughs> there is no dignity in being poor. There's no prestige in being poor. If there's one thing you must fight in your lifetime is fight poverty. I'm going to tell you something, a mystery that will shock you. When we talk about the issue of poverty, being wealthy, being rich, sometimes people think we are preaching the prosperity message. You go online, you hear people criticizing pastors and churches. These prosperity pastors, these prosperity churches, this prosperity gospel. There's nothing like this prosperity gospel. The gospel is actually prosperity. The gospel that Jesus brought is designed to make poor men rich. And I'm going to tell you something about wealth you don't understand. Being rich, being prosperous, and being wealthy has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with God and his kingdom. Let me give an example. If I have three children, and it's Christmas time, and we are going to the village, or we are traveling out, and we go to the shopping mall, let me ask you a question. Who do you think my interest in that shopping will be more on? Me or the children? Me or the children? Now, why am I going to be buying things for my children more and not buying for myself? Let me tell you why. Because when you look at my children, you can tell the quality of father that I am. If you look at my children carefully, you can examine for yourself and tell for yourself this is the quality of father this man is. He's a man that loves his children. He's a man that cares for his family. He's a man that thinks about his people. That's the way God treats us. That's how he wants to treat us. The issue about prosperity is not even about us. God is interested in showing the world how good he is. And that's why he wants you to be the perfect picture and the perfect image of his kindness, his goodness, and his mercy. So when a person is criticizing the prosperity message of gospel, he doesn't know he's fighting God directly. Because what he's doing is that he's saying, God, we don't want the world to see how good you are. We don't want the world to see how kind and faithful you are. Okay, number two. Why God wants to prosper people, prosper you even before, be more than what you even want. The Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Even before you start dreaming it, God has dreamt it for you. He wants you to prosper. Part of the reason why is because there's no other better way to advertise God's kingdom than the prosperity of his people. There's no better way to bring people into the kingdom than the prosperity of his people. Understand this. That the issue about prosperity has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Okay, let me explain that. The scripture says something, if you can find it, put it for them. Through prosperity, my cities shall yet again be spread abroad. Find it. Through prosperity, my kingdoms shall yet again be spread abroad. 
Do you know that the fight of life is a fight of kingdoms? The fight of the gospel is a fight of kingdoms. A kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness. And both kingdoms thrive on wealth. Both kingdoms are either expanding or retrogressing based on wealth. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Again, proclaim, saying, again, again. That means I have said it before. Proclaim, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my cities, my kingdoms, my territories shall again spread out through prosperity, not through prayer and fasting. Not through singing fine songs. Not through anything else. He said, my city shall again spread through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. What are we talking about here? The fight here is a fight of two kingdoms. God is interested in the advancement of his kingdom. The devil is also interested in the advancement of his kingdom. But the way to drive these two kingdoms is wealth. Is prosperity. The kingdom of darkness is not winning necessarily because they have more people than the church has. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness are either winning the battle or losing on both ends based on the amount of resources available to them. Anyway, you have seen the dark world, the world of darkness, the kingdom of the, the, the dark world making progress. Go and check. One of the major tools they use to advance their cause is money. Apart from people power, another power they have is money. Then you come to the kingdom of God, we religialize everything. We try to make everything look, you know, spiritual. I have always told you, and I want to tell you again, that money is the highest level of spirituality. The subject of money is the highest level of spirituality in the kingdom. Tell me what again in this world is more spiritual than God. Can any Christian be more spiritual than God? Okay, there's one thing that God equates to himself. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters at the same time. He said you will either forsake one and serve the other. And now added, you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon means money. What God is saying is that if there's anything that takes an equal place with him in your relationship with him is money. What God is saying is that money is not just paper. Money is a master. What God is saying is that money is not just currency. Money is a spiritual stuff it takes the same the same is as equal as god so god does not want you to serve two masters he wants to be the master and then he wants to give you money as a servant oh god 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 i wish you're getting this some of you if you're not careful you just miss it i want to help you correct this problem now stop thinking that god is wicked to have called you into this sheepfold, to have called you into this faith, and wants to keep you poor. Stop thinking that. God is not happy when you think that way. For we know the love of Christ, that though we were poor, but for our sakes, he became poor, so that through him, his poverty, we might become rich. He is interested first hand in your prosperity. See what is going on in the world now. Can't you see for yourself? This is my guy in Lagos, they call OBO. Hits one concert here now. See the millions of people who gather. Why? They have the means. Do you know that concert is crusade? Where they are recruiting more people into their kingdom. They already call Wheezy. Wakes up, does his own. Mm. Bam, the whole place is jammed full. And you think it is tongues, they are used to do it. It's money. Let me tell you something. You can be so anointed. But hear this. 
anointing without finance would lead to annoyance there are, there are those anointing the bible says money answered all all things all things that means money is not paper it's a person he has ears it answers all things when god helps you to enter wealth you will see that life is easier having money then you also see that serving god is easier having money let me shock you most of our prayer points are just money points yes sir you didn't hear me most of our prayer points are money points it's not the things we pray about our prayer points will change into other things when there's money in your hands i'm telling you the truth God, give us this city. Give us this city. Else we die. You will not pray that prayer again when there's money. It's prosperity that takes cities. Through prosperity shall my cities yet again be spread abroad. When you have money, your prayer point will change into things like, Lord, show us where all the poor people in this city are. Let's go and help them out. Lord, please give us revelation to know how many people are without jobs and show us the kind of industries to build. It's not, Lord, money coming to me now. It's not that prayer. When you get this money, you stop praying money coming to me now. You start praying, Lord, show me which industry to build. Money answered all things. That means there are some answers to prayer that you don't need. Just money. Prayer answered. Say they're always preaching money. These church people, they're always preaching money. What should we preach? Did you come here trekking? Okay, even if you trekked. The clothes you are wearing now, did you pick them on the street? Eh? The shoes you're wearing now, did you pick them on the street? The wristwatch you're wearing, did you pick it on the street? So what should we preach? Crime is on the increase. Why? Yahoo boys are everywhere. Why? What are people looking for? It's not money. The other day they stopped some amber bars we laid some is it bowling van they call it they were coming into the city and then they opened fire and they killed four policemen just because they wanted to get access to the money you need to see the way they guide those bowling vans they way 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 on the road and all the guns and all the mopo men that follows it human beings have not been guided like money that's how important money is you see human beings and then the people who are following the distance behind have never been guided like that but you see that big balloon van bulletproof or whatever everyone will be covered you will even see the driver making noise all over the place money so if they can guide paper like that is it ordinary paper it's a person it's a person they put security around that thing thing it's a person I wish the church do more of teaching the people about kingdom prosperity. We will reduce crime. Reduce all the social maladies we are suffering in our society. Okay, so what, what I'm going to be doing now is to show you, you know, uh, some key ways you can come out of poverty. I will show you that. I need to let you know also that this, I need to let you know this, that there is no um demon anywhere that is capable so much capable of stopping you from entering your place of rest except that which you do not know and do that which you do not know and do is a more powerful principality than that which you think is fighting you from your village i know where we are living i know the state we are living i know the bigger problem we have here the major problem we have here is ignorance. There are some cultural deformities we have around this part of the world. So much of cultural deformities holding people back from moving forward. 
And then they are now giving credits to Satan. Is the devil? Is my father? Is my mother? Is the witch at home? Is my grandmother? And all kinds of them. Um, you know, we're giving a lot of credit to the devil, and they're not taking responsibility for the decisions we have made to bring us where we are. How do we break free from poverty? You know, poverty is, is a spirit. Poverty is not just a state of not having. Poverty is a state of being. There's a way you are that produces that thing called lack. There's a way you are. There's a way you are that produces that thing called scarcity. And I see it all over this Ebony state. It's everywhere here. Especially with the younger class of people. It's everywhere around here. The culture, the culture, the culture is such that makes people poorer by the day. You know the state was even rated third most poor state in the country. And let me even let you know, it's not because of allocation. No. Every state in this country receives allocation. It's not necessarily because of that. The problem of poverty starts with culture. Starts with the kind of values we imbibe. Both as individuals, as family, and as a society as a whole. So, the issues I'm going to be dealing with are cultural issues. Issues that border on your cultural values. That's the issue we're going to be dealing on now. And I'm going to be coming on a larger scale to do a conference, a wealth creation conference for the whole state. Maybe I'll call it Youth Summit, Wealth Creation. And then look at a few things that can serve as a panacea or that can serve as a way forward for the Nigerian youth, especially those around this part of the world. That's my focus. Too much of crime, too much of Yahoo, too much of internet fraud, and too much of all that. So let's take it from number one. The first thing I've identified as one of the factors that produces poverty, which we must break away from, is this thing called poverty mentality. So to deal with it, what is the first way out? It is to start by building a wealth mentality. This is one of the areas I'm even going to major on when I do wealth creation conference for the state, for the nation, but I'll focus on the state more. The issue of wealth mentality is highly needed. Show them that scripture in Proverbs. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Nothing changes around you until your thought pattern changes. You know, a lot of people here listening to me now, the reason you're the way you are, if you trace carefully, comes from the background you were raised. This thing called mindset comes from your foundation. This thing called thought pattern comes from your background most of the times. There are two kinds of ways people are raised. Number one is nature and number two is nurture. Nature is how you are born or where you are born but not sure deals with how you grow a person born into a poverty environment into an environment that spells poverty is likely to grow having a poverty mentality let me give you an example you can get a guy born in the house of a palm wine tapa in the most remote area of edda or in the most remote area of EZ, or in the most remote area of Ezra, anywhere you want to call it, you can get the guy out of his father's house from that minute where he's still a, where he was just born freshly. The mother is a peasant farmer. The father is a palm wine tapper. If you get that baby out from the moment he or she is born and take him all the way to Banana Island and he grows in the house of the vice president, or maybe he grows in the house of Mike Adenuga. Or maybe he grows in the house of Dangote. Or maybe he grows in the house of, um, um, you know them, 
or Detola. He grows in all those people's kind of house. The shocking thing is that by the time that guy has grown, maybe up to 18 years, if you tell him his real father and his real mother are just palm wine tapas in the remotest part of Asia, he's going to give you a dirty slap. You know why he's going to give you a dirty slap? Not sure. Nature is that he's the son of a palm wine tapper. But nature is that he's raised by Adenuga. Nature is that he's raised in the house of Adenuga. That's what happened with Moses. You know, some of you, I'm even talking now, I can see your faces. I'm seeing the impact of nature and nature. A man who is born in a poor family but escapes that background early and then grows in the house of a man who has a healthy self image has escaped poverty. The one who is born in a nature of poverty and then poverty nurtured him has a big problem. He has a big problem. He doesn't know why he's the way he is. Why he's carrying that mediocrity mindset. It's where he's coming from. They show the picture of the daughter of the president in Abaklike today with the governor of the state. Confidently standing with a man. Shaking hands with a man and talking with a man in confidence. It's like nothing. I wake up every day in the house of the president. So what's a governor to me to be afraid of? What's a governor to be afraid of? What's a senator? You know this is why I see come to Asherok and bow to my dad. And they gave her a state, a state treatment like she really deserves. But somebody who has no background like that, who didn't grow from such a, who came from the most remote, the poorest, and all that, if, if you even, if, if, even if you see the governor on the road, you will take off. You just hear siren of the governor. You will enter the bush, thinking that the man is looking for who to arrest. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? It's the problem of not. The real poverty is not a poverty of the absence of money in your pocket. It's a poverty of the mind. Poverty does not begin with not having. It begins with being. That's where to break free from. In your mindset. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Watch this city. You see it's dominated by religion. And religion makes people comfortable in their mess. Religion is designed to make people comfortable in their poverty. I went and entered one orthodox church somewhere one time. What was it he was teaching the people? He said, you know, the Bible say, the poor you always have with you. He said, God designed some people to be rich and then designed some people to be poor. He said, so accept your condition the way you meet it. Accept yourself any because all fingers are not equal. He says some are big, some are long, some are short. So anywhere you are in life, he said, Can't you see in the Bible that there were poor people begging at the gates of the temple? He said, If you are rich, help the poor. If you are poor, the Bible says yours is the kingdom of God. And some of you grew from such backgrounds such family background and such religious background that gave you a satanic mindset a wrong orientation about issues of money some of you came from families where they sent you to school to graduate they never told you that you could be anything better than they were better than they are so they taught you to go to school. Go and read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. They taught you to go to school to get good grades, graduate, and go and start working from grade 9 or grade 8 in civil service. That's the best they have for you. Even your school is designed to help you become poor. The mentality we are carrying in this part of the world, in this country, in Africa, it's a cultural problem. That's what creates that problem of poverty mentality. See the way it starts from the family. Then our religious centers, what they are teaching us, missing the preaching scriptures, they now go to school. When you go to school, they only blow you with theories, blow you with nonsense, you know, managerial issues, teach you how to work in the civil service, local government this, local government that, all those nonsense they teach you, a national anthem. Do, ha, has he made anybody a billionaire? When you finish learning all that, 
you graduate there's no even job for you but watch the guys who are billionaires who are millionaires you notice they don't even have school sat school doesn't make any man rich if you go to school and get first class know that it's not an inheritance you can transfer only you has it your children will not inherit it you better start changing your paradigm about life for the continuation of this message please play the next track